see that I'm the only speaker with this face on in the, in the presentation. Um, I am known as, a, as an artist, uh, a futurist. By, by birth, I am an artist. I can sketch, you know, I do what basically what normal artists do. I carve, I do all sorts of crazy things. And as a matter of fact, my mother gave me a nickname. It's a Tswana nickname, it's called Beba. Those of you who don't know what that means, it means that naughty mouse. Because I everything that I could find in the house, I would just sketch and tear and cut and do all sorts of stuff. And that is basically the, the, the main thing that I will put everything all together to make you guys understand where my babaness has taken me through, you know, to, <laughs> to become who and what I am. And um, I'll take you through a, a bind map. It's working. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give a bit of background exactly who I am. And then we will go to um, a subject of communications as to how design is relevant if you part it with communications, they're very close together. And I'll share with you guys with a concept that I call five rand mindset. And then I will tie that together with a couple of concepts that I have done. And we will go to the final part of the presentation where I will share with you a video of something which I believe will revolutionize my life and Africans as a whole and, and, and the sphere of design as a whole. The first thing that I would like to pick your brain on is communication. It's a word that everybody knows what it means, but few people understand how to implement it correctly. For example, babies. Babies, everybody knows that when they are born, they make a lot of noise and they scream. But to the doctors and the physicians, it's a very good sign that they are alive, they are healthy, everything's going well. But to people who don't have babies, if they start screaming in the mall, you know, they, they're disruptive, but they are communicating something. And the one thing unique about babies is the fact that they, all over the world, they have mastered the technique of screaming. If it's waking, making you up at one o'clock, they are communicating something. Now, I have three examples that I've got you on the screen. If I say to you now, pizza, or sushi or BMW, I can guarantee you 70% of people in this room, if I say pizza, they're thinking of food. If I say sushi, also thinking of food or chopsticks. If I say BMW, they're probably thinking of a fast car, you know, flashy, dashy car. But all of these three items have one thing in common with babies. They are consistently communicating something and they get people to react and people begin to invest in these brands. Now, if I say Africa, what is the one thing that you can think of that Africans have done that really gets people to react? The same way you would react if you see someone driving a BMW. Now, I don't have a lot in my mind, but most of them are not positive, but I'm not about being negative today. I, I'm here to tell a good story. And that sums up my presentation, that Africa, we are creative. It's just the question of how we are packaging ourselves in a way that the world can react to whatever that we're presenting in a form of design. Now, the father and mindset that I spoke about a bit earlier, it's a, it's a concept that I personally use. It's a word I use almost every day. I've come to realize that there's not much that you can buy with a five rand apart from just a few items. And then whenever I see something that is substandard or doesn't have a lot of value or it is not on par with what the rest of the world is doing, then you might find me in the mall saying that is five rand. So that means that I am not happy with what I'm receiving. And I've come to realize that a lot of things around Africa, they're not where they should be. And henceforth, I'm saying anything that is not what it should be, it is vibrant in my eyes. That is my opinion as a creative. I've had a, a lot of influences in my life, and that will lead up to the story that I'm telling now at the moment. Everybody knows who Leonardo da Vinci is. He was, uh, he was well known to be a painter, but he was more than that. And that's why he's one of the people that I actually have influenced me as a person. 
Because people, when they see me, they think that Khosi draws, therefore he is a painter. I am not just a painter. I am someone who I believe I can bring a lot of value. And there's more to me than just what you see here today. And I will touch also on a man called George Lucas. George Lucas, he's the first guy who put up, those who know movies, Star Wars. Star Wars broke a lot of records in history and film where George Lucas actually is the, known to be the founder of visual effects, Matrix, all the good stuff that you see in the movies. He's the guy behind all of that. And uh, to conclude everything about my background is that my, my story. The first time when the movie Toy Story came out, it really set up the pathway of my, uh, of my destiny, if I can put it that way. First time I saw 3D animation, it blew me away. You know, then I thought 2D animation was it and puppet shows, but this was it. And then henceforth I went and I studied further. And um, I wanted to give you that background so you understand a lot, of, a lot of the images that I'm gonna put up on stage, they are, more of them are expressed in 3D. So I hope that you will find them very exciting as I do find them. And as a, as a creative person, I'm always influenced by my environment. So no matter what I would do, something influences me and I put it on canvas, but for my trade sake, I use visuals on television, 3D, and so forth. I'll start by saying fashion. And now you're probably asking yourself, what has babies in Africa and fashion got to do with 3D? It is quite simple. I believe that as Africans, it's time that we actually package ourselves in a way that even some of the most minute things that we do, they carry great value. If we do something as Africans, will a guy in China or Brazil look at a shoe and say, wow, this is an African design. I want it. So far, I have not met one. And as part of that, this is one of the designs that I did, a concept for Nike. Uh, in Tswana, it's a word called Mokatat. It means that it's a flip-flop. I think I stand to be corrected. But <laughs> uh, the design, basically, as you look at it, it's, a, it's got an African shape to it. And uh, especially the one on, on the bottom with the, with the gray stripes and the yellow on the bottom, it really, that influenced me when I saw the, um, I think it's the, the vendor people and the, and the Zulu people. They have those little designed, triangular designs on the bottom. And that led to the concept that you see here today. And then from this slide, I will go to one thing that I love the most. It's called conceptual designing, automotive, de automotive design. I love geometric shapes. Henceforth, the design that you saw, it, it's not just normal, you know, curvy, mountainous shapes. I love geometric shapes. Now, the first concept that you see is called the Falcon 2000. It's basically, I was influenced by a bird, Falcon. I was watching National Geographic, and I thought, wow, that bird is cool. And you can see the design itself, the front part of the, of the design, it's a beak. And then on the side, it has got like an elongated, uh, almost like a, a wing, uh, what do you call this thing? The wings as it goes down for, for a kill. And that's the reason why you have, I'll show you the back part of the car now. The back part of the car, it simulates the feathers of the bird itself. And the next one is just one of those crazy moments that I had, I designed, I don't know what this thing is. Uh, it just looks nice. And over here, it's the process that I take to actually put in something on, before it goes to 3D, this is the process that it goes to. It's a Lambo. I uh, haven't given a name yet, but I'll come up with something very soon. And then the next part of my presentation is me as a storyteller. I love writing stuff. And as you can see, I'm quite passionate about African things. So from here forth, I will show you some of the concepts that, are, that we have done that we're busy with. And we have a television show that we have shot, that we have designed, it's called AMH. It's called African My Heritage. It basically just explores you know that Africans are scientists, anthropologists, that agriculture, there was a system in place, it's just that it was never documented properly. So everybody else thinks that you know Africans don't know what they're doing, but it's mainly because there's no reference point to those specific things. And some of them still work till today. And um, here is a subject that really 
People think that I might be crazy. I believe I'm not. I haven't been handcuffed yet, but yeah, I tend to be corrected. I've always asked myself when I watch a movie and I see aliens abducting people and I thought, hmm, I've never seen aliens come to Africa. <laughs> Aren't we candidates for such, you know? But that's just me. <laughs> and uh, that inspired me a lot. And I came up with, a, with, a, with an idea of making up the first African superhero. I called him Mosoto. Basically, Mosoto will be a superstar like Batman, Superman. <laughs> he has powers like, you know, all cool superhero, uh, superhero people have. See, the reason why I'm saying all these things is because I realize that even for, for identity sex, it's very, very important because people ought to have reference point. And then when someone is here, then he's seeing Batman, he's thinking, I don't have a point in who's like Batman. I mean, how would I look if I wear Batman's mask? That's how I think, you know, because, you know, it looks a bit big. Will the mask look like this or that? So I think about such things. So Mosoto is something that we have done, and we're hoping that in the near future it will be as how a household name. So when people say African superhero, there you go. <laughs> and then this is the, it's still in the in the primitive stages. And I think Africans were the first people to have a cape. Yep. The Basuti people they will put a blanket and when they fight it, they will put it over the shoulder. It's a cape. <laughs> That's what it is. The last one. And I'd like to announce that this is the first audience outside of where we're actually working. There's a movie called Zulubot. And later on, after my presentation, there's a video that we're gonna watch. It's the, not the official trailer, but I would say you will be the first people to actually see it. Um, Zulu body is quite simple. It explains itself. I wanted to find an icon that I can use to communicate to the rest of the world what Africans are all about. And I did a bit of history and Shaka Zulu come to mind because every time when you speak to someone else who's not from here, they would say, are you, are you Zulu? Whatever. <laughs> then you say, no. Are you from Suedo? You say, no. You're like, okay. Shaka Zulu is the most you know, the one that they know. And then we embarked on a project. This is how the figurine looks like. Uh, he has all the attributes that Zulu men have. This is the character, the symbol Z on his chest. The story goes about uh, this being uh, that has been constructed from Shaka Zulu's heart. Basically, when you watch the movie, you will see that Shaka Zulu's heart is behind the symbol that you see on his chest. And then in front of it, it's, we created uh, a power energy source that is called the African stone, that which you will see later on the, the, the relevance of that. So this is his cool superhero, you know, look, Batman, because each superhero ought to have their own signature. This is the one that we have now. And um, one of the challenges that we had, I wanted to create something that has not yet been seen or been heard before. So as always, I did my research and I found out that in Africa we've got cool names, but they've never been exploited. For example, Ivoria in the movie, it's a place where there's these big massive robots that look like elephants and it's a city that moves just like elephants do. So my reference point is always back to Africa. And then Kango, we've got, we've got Kango Caves in South Africa. The whole idea of this specific scene, it's the Kango, Kango Caves, they've got... Um, crystal is pointing downwards. It's a city that is hidden in the mountain, it's pointing downwards. And the second one is Agolia, you know, Johannesburg, everybody knows about it. And Tabing, it's the mountain people. And all of these places, they've got their own robots. They look, you know, in their own way. And I thought of, okay, how would a Rondavo look like in a futuristic way? How would it look like? And it had to make sense because the close to the coast, you know, as, as you see, it's got like a wind turbine, it spins, it generates power. That's where Zulu bought and his buddies, they go then recharge. And the next one, this is the bad guy, the evil guy. Uh, I'd like to bring your attention to this one because a lot of people, they say that, ah, Jose, that looks like, you know, but I'm saying 
the reference point with what I'm doing is I'm telling African stories. And I'm choosing 3D as a platform to share those stories. And they're good stories, by the way, because if we do, because we do have an identity. Sometimes it might be, people might find it very offensive, whatever, but that's not the reason of what I'm doing. I believe that if we tell the stories correctly, people begin to embrace them, it creates an identity, and the whole world will begin to put us in a box of people who have got heritage. And if we tell the story right, they will go watch the movie and buy DVDs. This is a concept of a canon. Everybody knows how the old canon looks like. And then on the left-hand side, it illustrates exactly how it is in flight and how it lands and how it shoots. The next one, this is a ship. Jan van Riebeck, as I'm told in history, came with three ships. So I didn't want to have three ships. So this ship is three ships embodied into one. I have not given it a name yet, but I wanted to find, I'll meet a nice, if I can, if someone knows how to speak Holland, please speak to me. I need to get my effects correctly. This is one of the scenes in, in the short film that you're about to see. And the next one, Zulu Boy doesn't travel alone. South Africa is not built up by a certain group of people. There's whole other people involved in it. The next one on the left is called the Tuba. He is a robot designed by the San and the Kwai people. The one on the right, it is Sot, deriving from the Basutu people. And each Clang has got their own robot, if I can put it that way. And over here, this is where we will watch the video. Uh, sound, please. <laughs> yeah, you're making me blush now. <laughs> and I go purple when I blush. Um, ladies and gentlemen, that is exactly what I believe that Africa can offer to the world. Because I believe that if we lose the father and mindset, we'll be able to prep ourselves to actually put ourselves in a position where the world can actually appreciate what we have to offer. But for as long as we're thinking in a certain way, that is not on par with what the rest of the world is expecting from us or what we're able to do. We'll always be called the dark continent. And I believe that we are the generation that are gonna turn it around. And I will finish off by saying that Africa can offer what the rest of the world is offering to us. And I thank you.